Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are back with Jennifer Walker. She has been doing wonderful, and she has given two readings, two sessions on tarot. <laughs> now she's carrying on with the third. So please tell us what's there for this session. So a lot of people don't realize, but you also use astrology and you kind of need to know what, you know, astrology signs are in tarot to help you um, with readings. So, I mean, it's not necessary, but um, it does help to understand, um, to understand the personalities of the people that are coming in. If you're doing a relationship reading or you want to get involved with somebody in business and you want to know who this partner is and like how their personality is going to be. The only way you really can know that is if you know what their astrology is, like what is the personality going to be like? So we're going to talk about what are, uh, we're going to start with, um, basically uh, there's astrology and it's in the, um, it's in the court cards, which is the, uh, the kings, the queens, and the knights, and the pages. And um, you can see certain elements of certain astrology signs in there. So we'll give an example. So we have Scorpio. So in a major arcana card, the Scorpio card is the death card. And what is Scorpio? If you just know what Scorpio means, Scorpio is all about death transformation, um, resurrection, you know, um, coming, you know, coming out of something, ending something, starting something anew. They're, uh, they're like a Phoenix rising. So you'll see that sometimes in the death card, sometimes can represent the person you're reading for could be a Scorpio and that would be the current. So that would be the person Scorpio, or they could be dealing with a Scorpio. So it may not necessarily mean death. It means me may, it may represent that person there may be a transformation with that, that person it just could be representing of that person. I hope that's clear. <laughs> I hope that explained that right. Uh, that personality will come out as the death card. So, so what I'm trying to say, I want to just make sure that I'm being clear about this. So let's say we're doing a reading. Okay. And it's representing of a person, a personality of a person. So it doesn't mean that death is going to happen and ending is going to happen. It's, it just means that this is the personality of the person you're dealing with. So if there's a particular question, let's say uh, the question is, uh, um, who am I going to, who's my next relationship going to be with, or what's their personality going to be like? And you get the Scorpio card which is the death card. It just means that that person's like a Scorpio kind of personality. Okay. I hope that that's clear. <laughs> so, and also in a love reading, you could also look at the court cards the same way. You could say, okay, I have, you know, uh, the King of Cups. Now the King of Cups could be represented of Scorpio, could be represented of Pisces. It could be represented of Cancer. So it could be all three of those signs. It could be a personality of that person. It could be a water sign person. So you need to know that the water sign person is Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. All right. Does that, is that clear to you as far as what I'm explaining here? Okay. Good. Okay. So let's kind of briefly kind of go over um, what each one of these court cards are while we're on that. All right. So as I said before, with the major arcana, this is beyond your control. This is beyond your control. This is something you can't control that the universe is in charge of. And that um, if you have cards that are next to this, it's, it's a major event. It's something major. It's happening in your life. So then let's go over what, what each one of these means. So pages. Pages are always about messages. They're about new paths. So then, then we go back to, again, the elements. What's the element of water? So a new path. What's a new path? A new path in love, a new path in a relationship, a new path emotionally, um, all to do with emotions, relationships, something to do with feeling. Always remember, go back to feelings, all right? But pages also always represent every page. Doesn't matter if what element they are. Every page is new path or some type of communication in that area. All right. And then we have knights. So you have the knight of cups. Same thing. So the knight of cups would represent any 
Water sign person, Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. So it can represent any of those people. However, sometimes, and I have to put this however in here, sometimes when you're doing a reading and you, um, you see certain symbols in the cards. So let's say, uh, let's, let's use, actually, let me use one that's good. All right. So we have this King of Cups here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a fish in the card. So what are fishes? Pisces. So your intuition tells you, oh man, this is a Pisces person. I can, I can narrow it down to Pisces. And also in this card, actually, there's also fishes. If you look at his armor with the Knight of Cups, he has fishes on his armor. So that means this is a Pisces person. Of course, as I told you before, if the tarot card changes, if you have a different deck and the artist puts something different in there, you want to go by that symbolism. All right. So if the artist has a scorpion in there with the, with the Knight of Cups. Then, you know, OK, that's a scorpion. That's a Scorpio person. Or if there's a moon in the, in the, in the card, then, you know, that's cancer. That's that's uh, the cancer sign. So what are knights? If you look at this person, they are on a horse. What are, what are horses? Horses move. So it's movement. So if you're asking about if this relationship's going to go somewhere, it's going to move, it's, it's, something's going to happen with it, yes, there's going, to be, there's going to be some kind of movement. They're going to move towards you or away from you. There's going to be some kind of movement here because there's a horse there. All right, so, and then we have queens. So they have the queen of cups. So in this situation... I always think of her as the, the Scorpio card, but the Queen of Cups, I always think of the Scorpio, but that's just me. Um, some decks may have some other symbolism on there, but I always think of her. But queens are um, always about patience, and they also have a lot of life experience. So, you know, they've mastered a lot. They're not immature. They're not like immature like, uh, you know, when you see the Page of Cups, that's someone who's like young, naive about love and like, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm in love, but not thinking about the complications of love. And then you have the knight, you have the knight in shining armor. It's like someone who is like, uh, like a teenager, I guess, you know, they've kind of had some experience, but not a lot of experience. And they're like, hey, let me give my heart. And then, you know, and they don't think about the fact that they get hurt. But the queen, the queen has gotten hurt. The queen has felt pain. The queen has had past relationships where, you know, it didn't go so well. And now uh, if you look at her cup, she's kind of closed off. She's like, you know, I'm not going to give this away freely to you. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait for the right person to come along that I'm going to give my cup to because, you know what, I, I remember what happened in the past and how I got hurt and, you know, I'm just not really willing to take too much risk. But on the same token, when she does give her cup to you, she knows what she's getting into. She knows that she's ready. She knows that she's going to take a, a risk that's worth taking. So um, that is a good card to get. Like, so if you want a more of a serious relationship and you want somebody who's really mature in their emotions, a queen of cups would be a good card to get. So then we have the kings, right? So as I said before, he has a fish in there. So obviously I, I think this is a Pisces sign. But kings are wisdom. So, you know, they've been to the gamut. They've, they've been married before, you know, possibly they, they've been hurt. They've gone through the gamut. But then, you know, instead of the queen, they got hurt. They, they you know, they, they, they learn from their experience and they're not as cautious. They're closed off. They're cautious. Kings are like, you know what? I've gotten hurt. But you know what? There's two sides to every coin. You know what? I've, I've done some stuff. Two, and I've been the cause of bad relationships, and the other person has two, so they're really wise in their their emotions. And you know what? When they commit, they're like, "Okay, I'm I'm going to commit to you, and I'm going to commit to you for life. I'm going to get married to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through with you on thick and thin on this. You know, this is this is going to be a long term thing. So if you get a king in a relationship reading, that means that person is is really in it. They really want something long term. They really know what they're getting into." And they're really wise in their decision making when it comes to emotions. Okay, so we went through the astrology for 
the cups. Uh, actually, I don't know if I, did I put the, show you guys the moon card? No, I didn't, did I? One second, give me one second. I thought I took it out of the deck, but of course, no. I wanted to show you the cancer card, but it doesn't want to be shown today, so, <laughs> so I guess it's not going to be shown. Uh, I thought I took it out. All right, we'll just keep moving on. That's fine. All right, we'll just keep going. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is the wands. So we have Aries, we have Sagittarius, and we have Leo. As I said before, um, it's always about the personality that's gonna come out, that's gonna help you as a reader. And you wanna use your intuition on this. Um, sometimes, the major arcana, for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, where's my fire at? Here we go. Okay. So the emperor card. Aries. Now, isn't that an Aries personality right there? If you look at that card. He is in charge. He is, you know, passionate. He's got willpower. What is, what is Aries? What is Mars? The soldier. You know, he's, he's on his throne. He's, he's, as these say, it's laying, chilling out. <laughs> he's relaxed. And might I also add for the emperor, um, he's a person that doesn't need a partner. So uh, emperors and the empress, they don't need a, a partner. So where is a king needs a queen? You know, a knight needs somebody, a page needs somebody. The emperor doesn't need anybody. The emperor is a soldier. The soldier is getting out there. He's, he's courageous and, you know, he's, uh, he's ready for battle. He, he doesn't care if he dies. He's, uh, he, he can stand alone. He can, he can have a part and not have a part and he doesn't care. So as you can see, this is an atypical Aries looking card. So if you get that person, well, they, they, they'd like to be in a relationship, but um, they don't have to be. But they're, uh, they can be by themselves, they can weave with somebody, they don't care. <laughs> but they're a strong individual, and you know if you're with them, they're going to be a rock for you. So that's what you can take away with the Aries card. Um, and then we have the Sun card, which is Leo. And obviously, Leo is represented of the Sun, right? Leo's the Sun. And um, you got sunflowers, which is also a symbol of the sun. So it also helps if you study symbolism as well. So if you get this card uh, and you keep getting like, let's say you get like uh, the strength card. That's another good one. I don't think I have that, put that down. But anyway, the strength card is another good one. It has a lion on it. Obviously, it's going to represent a Leo personality. What will happen in a relationship reading is, I hope I don't have too much shine on this. Can you guys see this okay? Yes, no, can you see it? Okay, cool. Uh, you wanna look at the symbolism to help jog your memory of what the Leo is, like what is it representing? So like the strength card has a lion on it, obviously that's a Leo. And you have the sun, obviously it's Leo. You have sunflowers, that's a Leo. So any kind of lion or sun or anything to do with that is going to signify a Leo personality, okay. So, and also why we're on this, again, we'll go back over this again. Oh, yeah, I did have the strength card right here. See? There's a lion on there. Leo. That's a Leo personality, which is the strength card. And then you also go back, uh, you can also kind of, like, if you get this for a personality, it's a Leo personality. Um, and they, uh, they may have some issues with controlling their you know, sexual desires. <laughs> so it, it could represent Leo, but it also, you know, the warning to you like, well, you know, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> anyway, so, because uh, you're going back to the elements again. What is fire? Fire is passion, is willpower, is sexuality, is creativity, so forth. And that's how you also interpret it with the court cards. Again, so we have the page. Page of Wands. Pages always represent something new, right? A new path, a communication. 
So what's this communication going to be? What's this new path going to be? Always go back to your elements, creativity, uh, passion, um, you know, uh, desires, you know, moving forward, some kind of movement's going to happen with this. You're definitely going to hear messages of passion, right? With the page. Uh, then we have the, the night card, night of wands, which I don't really like to get for relationship readings, honestly, because this is the player card. This is, this is the guy that's, he's so passionate. He's like going in and out of different areas. <laughs> it's, it's a movement card. So it's, it's, a you know, the knight of wands, he's all about uh, movement because the knight of wands is always about with the horse. It's always about movement. Obviously he's very quick, quick. So he's very passionate. He's very, uh, um, uh, creative. You know, he's very, this, very, that, and like a teenager kind of energy, you know, he's, he has this, he's not quite mature yet. Hasn't really experienced everything as of yet. So he's, He's, he, I'm just saying he, because of the fact that it's the, the knight is, is a guy on there. So I'm, I'm, this can be general, uh, you know, gender neutral. So, you know, he's, he's not really a good card to get in a relationship reading. So I, I, I see this card as the player type because, you know, they haven't really had enough experience yet. They're still kind of exploring their sexuality and they're kind of like, you know, still doing their thing. Sorry. <laughs> So then we have the queen, the queen of wands. Now, this is an interesting card because this, this is definitely a Leo energy because we have the sunflower. But if you look at the cat, what do cats represent? Think about what cats represent. What's the symbol for a cat? Cats are, they want to be bothered when you, when they want to be bothered with you. When they want to be bothered with you, they'll be bothered with you. So then you have to think about that with the queen. The queen of wands is the same way. She's like, well, I don't want to be bothered with you today. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I want to be bothered with you today. Come on, let's go hang out. <laughs> you know, she has that kind of energy, but she is very passionate, very creative. She has a mastery of those things. She has experienced in it. She's experienced relationships. She's experienced creativity. And uh, queens are always about experience. But when we talk about it in the sense of fire or wands, we're talking about it in passion, sexuality, uh, creativity, willpower, so forth. Okay. So we always think about it. We always come back to those things. And then you can also throw, you know, what you know about a Leo onto it as well. So if you know anything about astrology pertaining to Leos, then you can throw that on the card as well. So, and then we have the King of Wands. So this guy, you know, he's, he's had experience. He's wise. Kings are always wise. So he has experience in his passions. He's gone out there. He you know he's tried a lot of things. He's been passionate about a lot of things. He, you know, he's he's done a lot of things, and he's now he's like, all right, I know what I want. I know how to go get it. I know how to control my passions. I am stable. So if you get this in a relationship, this guy is a lot of fun and he is, or girl, is a lot of fun and they also are stable in there and they're controlled and, you know, they're not so, uh, so you, you meet people that, oh, I'm going to go do this and they just go do it or, you know, I'm going to go travel here and they go travel there, but they don't think about the consequences of that action, right? They don't think about the consequences of those desires that they have. But the king has, he's gone through that. He's like, man, if I go and I follow this passion, this is going to happen. If I do this, this is going to happen. So he's a lot more controlled and he's relaxed and he's sure of himself. So that's a good card to get. Okay, so that is for the uh, Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. So All right. So do the uh, remaining in the next uh, part? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so thank you very much for your time and stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a never-ending session. <laughs> okay, bye. And if you're not watching the other parts, then please watch it and watch the next part also. Okay, bye-bye. See you.